Hey all, Ash here. This is the next and last video in the Japan vlog series. If you missed the last one, feel free to click the link up top. Anyways, we had to take a plane all the way down to Hiroshima, and it was kind of late once we got there, so the only thing we really did was get some food, and this omelette rice was amazing, and I heavily recommend getting it when you're in Japan. Uh, after that though, we went to sleep and we took a train the following day to Miyajima, which is an island very close to Hiroshima. I'm not gonna lie, to actually get there it was a little bit complicated, but bless the, the train conductor or, or whatever he was at the actual train station that helped us out with a huge map of the area. So we were able to figure it out and get on down there. We knew that we then had to take a ferry, uh, just because like I said, it's an actual island off the side of it. There was one reason in specific that we decided to go there, however, I'll wait to show you that a little bit later. As far as Miyajima itself, this place was gorgeous. It was absolutely beautiful and had a whole bunch of surprises in store for us. Like deer, just like Nara, they just kind of wander around. That these ones aren't as aggressive, uh, just because you can't feed them crackers like in Nara. Anyways, back to Miyajima. I think it's best if I stop talking for a little bit and let you just enjoy the majestic nature of this place. So I'll come back once uh, the main attraction pops in. You can tell I am not lying. This place has a quiet, serene nature to it, and the beauty matched with the water surrounding the island just makes it even better. However, I was talking about our main attraction, right? Uh, so this place actually has a giant tori gate in the middle of the lake or ocean i'm not too sure what it is and it looks amazing it, it can actually uh, change depending on when you go like high tide or low tide uh, but the way that we got it it just looked gorgeous now i said that this place also had other secrets in store for us i did not know that the temples here were also surrounded in water so just getting to see that was a pleasant surprise and it doesn't even stop there. The buildings are really pretty all throughout this entire island, and it just has a homey Japan feel to it. So much so that next time we go to Japan, for a long trip at least, we want to make sure to stay here at least for a couple of days. There is so much here to explore, and we felt like this little snapshot just didn't give us enough and we're craving more of it. While we were there, we also found out that they had an aquarium, and since we didn't get to go to the one that we wanted to in Okinawa, we decided to visit this one. It was a bit of a journey because we did have to hike a giant mountain to get there, uh, but it was definitely worth it. Can't remember the exact price either, but it wasn't even that expensive, especially for what you get. There was a ton of different marine critters here. I'm talking seals, penguins, stingrays, random fish, giant crabs, you name it. I'll go ahead and let the footage kind of play out for itself so you can see everything that I'm talking about. And I'll pick up as soon as the footage of these little critters is done. <laughs> this one has a Oh, look at this yellow one. Oh, yellow. Yeah. This looks kind of cute. Are you saying the one? Yeah, I didn't know some of the kind of like snouts. Look at that big visual. Uh, yeah. That little one looking at the lock is me. Oh, 
we're snuggling. Look at Some of them are. Tit. <laughs> <laughs> You know what he looks like? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed all of these clips as well as Umi and I's dumb kind of little commentary or little quips that we were making throughout the videos. Anyways after this we decided to explore the gift shop because they had a whole bunch of cute little plushies. As you can tell Umi was kind of eyeing that penguin going right there. And while we did get something from here, you're going to actually have to wait to see it in the haul video, which will be the next video, by the way. Uh, so you won't have to wait that long, at least. Uh, anyways, after this, we decided to go back through the city. We got a little bit of snacks, but I forgot to record those. So instead, just enjoy looking at the gift shop just a tiny little bit longer. Uh, after that, though, we boarded the ferry back so we could head on back to Hiroshima because there were other places that we wanted to explore in the main city, too. So off of the ferry, we ended up getting back on the train, which took about an hour to get back to the main city. And from there, we went straight to the place that we wanted to visit the most in Hiroshima, which was the Atomic Bomb Dome building. Fun little fact, this building actually survived the atomic bombing in Hiroshima. That's why it stands out here so much. And although it doesn't really look like it, 
this city was completely devastated by that. And it's hard to tell because look at it, it looks amazing. It ended up being the prettiest out of every single city in Japan in my opinion. Which is crazy to think about when less than a hundred years ago this city was reduced to ashes, everything was destroyed and only a few little things ended up surviving like this building for example. And even then, just it's not a normal building anymore, it's, it's still kind of crumbling a little bit. They've done their best to restore it, to keep it looking as good as possible, which I'm glad because this is just a memorable piece of history that you should visit if you do come to this city. As far as Hiroshima, it's kind of a bittersweet feeling here. And you get a bit of that feeling here just looking at the building, knowing what happened to this city such a long time ago. And knowing that there's always the chance that something like this can always happen again. Uh, I'll kind of touch on that a little bit more later when we get to the museum. But after this, we decided to explore some of the nearby city before going to the museum. Of course, we had to visit the Pokemon Center because you know me, I have to always visit a Pokemon Center. Uh, this time I behaved though, I actually didn't buy anything, so good on me for this one. We then went to Hiroshima Castle, which was surrounded by water and looked really pretty. It was also really big too though, so our knees were completely just gone. Well, mostly Umi's knees and, and my ankle for the most part. However, we're glad that we visited here because like that building, they had some trees that were actually bombed too. So some of the trees that you see here that have plaques in front of them or are wrapped up, those ones were bombed and they managed to survive somehow. We finished walking and experienced everything that we could at this location before calling in an Uber because again, our legs were dead and there's no way we were going to make it back to the location that we came from, which is actually where the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum was. Now, you are going to see footage from this museum, but not a lot. I decided to only record things that were physical items that were destroyed from the bomb. Because there's a lot of pictures and artifacts that they got from the people that ended up getting bombed themselves there. Some of the pictures are gruesome and it just didn't feel respectful for me to show that off. So all of the footage that you're going to see has nothing to do with the actual people or their clothing or photographs of how they looked themselves. That stuff is worth looking at and I'm glad that we visited this museum because it puts in perspective the horrors of the atomic bomb. However, it did not, again, feel respectful to show it here. So you're not going to see any of that footage, just actual items that were left over and either mutilated or kind of messed up by the bomb itself. This is where that bittersweet feeling starts to creep in. As you can tell from the footage, nobody was talking, they were just taking in the brutal nature of the atomic bomb. So if you're in Hiroshima, this place is a must visit. It's not expensive to visit, and I think it's important that everybody sees the human toll that this can take when bombs like these are dropped on people. Because at the end of the day, it was people that ended up having to suffer with it. I know there's a lot of context behind it, there's a reason that it happened, but still, the brutal nature of it can be understated. After all that, it was getting kind of late, so we decided to go ahead and grab some food. Uh, we got a last bowl of ramen just because we were going to be leaving the last day, and it was pretty good too. And we called it a day. The following morning, we took a bullet train, and thankfully, we were actually lucky to see Mount Fuji on our way back. You can kind of see it peeking out right there. Uh, that's Mount Fuji right there. It tends to hide in the clouds, but we got lucky at least on the way back. Uh, but we went all the way down to Tokyo. It did take a couple of hours to get there, but it wasn't that painful. While we were there, we wanted to explore Akihabara one last time. So we went through the shops, shopped a whole bunch, and spent some more money, of course, because, you know, you got to do that when you're in Akihabara. And rushed back to the train station so they can take a train to Tokyo Station, then take a bus back to Narada Airport, so that we were early enough to make sure that we didn't miss our flight. When we got back to Naruto, I saw these awesome Pokemon 
the, I guess, pictures posted up everywhere. I didn't see it the first time, but it was awesome to get the chance to see it. Anyways, after this, we took our flight all the way back to LA. Then we went home after this. So yeah, that's the end of the Japan vlog series. As you can tell, we had a ton of fun going through all these different cities, eating amazing food, experience the breathtaking culture, and the even better people. Honestly, if we could move to Japan, we would do it in a heartbeat. And I heavily recommend anyone go to visit if you're even remotely interested in anything that the country has to offer. You can do it any season and you're going to get a unique experience. You fell in love with it so much that, uh, well, surprise, surprise, we're actually going back. Uh, so my wife's birthday and our wedding anniversary are coming up in June. So I figured I'd surprise her with a little gift. So next month, or give or take about a month, uh, we're actually going to be going back to Japan for about a week which means that round two of the Japan vlog content is going to continue as well. Uh, I actually like making the content, so I'm going to keep doing that as well. Uh, before Japan, there's actually going to be another little mini vlog in two different locations, but I'll save that surprise for a little bit later. Just know that those videos will continue alongside all the gaming content that you're used to. That's not going away anytime soon. either. Uh, but thank you all for watching. Like, subscribe, comment on what part you like the most on this journey. In this specific video, what did you like about Miyajima or Hiroshima or even the last little bit in Akihabara in Tokyo? Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ash out. By the way, little little, little PS, uh, I thought it'd be nice to end this video with a little something special. So I'm going to just go ahead and roll it.